Hey, what's up, reefers? I thought I'd show you how I calibrate my Trident. I noticed that my reagents were low, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, change them out, and I also have to do a calibration, so I'll show you how to do that properly. First thing I gotta do is change my reagents. If you notice, I like to keep them out like this instead of putting them in the tray. That makes it easy for me to change them. So I got my uh, box of reagents here for my Trident. And the directions say to give them a little shake before you change it. I don't know why it's just going to settle later anyway, but I'll do what manufacturers suggest. Shake them up a little bit. Also, if you don't have them, I highly recommend, I'll take one off here, that you get these little uh, reagent uh, needle guides. What these do is it uh, guides the needle towards the center of the bottle, and that helps get all the reagent out. Um, there's other tricks that I'll discuss in a little bit to uh, help you get all the reagent out as well. Sometimes when you change this, you'll notice there's quite a bit left. And uh, that's because, uh, just to uh, err on the side of caution, this will uh, think that the bottle's empty when it's not. So it'll say the bottle's empty and it really isn't. And in that case, all you have to do is just reset the level for your reagent and then change it when it's really empty. Like mine are really empty right now. So I gotta make sure that I, I get these changed before it uh, draws air inside of the, uh, the lines. Okay. And for me, it's a lot more convenient to have the bottles outside of the trident at all times. It's just easier for me to change. My alkalinity one's still about half full, so I'm gonna leave that. All right, so now we got these changed. You can put the caps back on and toss these containers or reuse them, recycle them, however uh, you decide to handle them. Then we'll get our uh, calibration fluid out. This is the calibration fluid here. And it tells you at least what they say they believe the values to be as far as DKH, calcium, and magnesium. So right from Neptune, those are the numbers you want to input, the numbers that are on the bottle. So I'm going to grab the camera here in a little bit, in a minute, and uh, I'll show you what the trick is to doing this. That's very important. Uh, that you put this at a certain level. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so you see this right here? That's my sample line for the Trident. So wherever that sample line is, as far as off the uh, height off the floor, that's where you want to put this bottle when you're doing your calibration on the outside of the tank. So if it's up there, you want to prop it up on a box or something to get it about the same height, as close as you can. And you also want to route that the same way. So when I take it out to calibrate, see how it just goes over the top there? I just go like this, outside of the tank, and then I'm going to put this on top of a box or something, and it's going to be at the same level as what it was in the tank. That's very important because the back pressure on this hose is how this Trident uh, samples the uh, DKH, calcium, and magnesium. So it's important to keep it at that same level. Otherwise, it, it can change your results, and people have uh, wacky results when they don't do that. So uh, let me get a box here, and I'll show you what I mean. And it just so happens the reagent box works out pretty good for this. So see that? See how it's pretty close? I think the actual uh, instructions say within six inches. So this is about as close as you can get here. So you just stick that line, put it in your bottle. And then the next important part comes into play. Just like that. You route it just like it's in the tank as close as possible. And in the same, around the same height. All right, now for the tricky part. I don't have all the gizmos and, and computers and stuff to uh, show you the screen on this video, but I'm gonna pull it up on another phone here. So I'm gonna pull up my uh, Apex Fusion on my other phone here. 
is I use my phone to record all my videos, believe it or not. All right, so there's me. Okay, so there's our uh, Apex screen. So you want to scroll so you get to your trident. If I can, that's a little better. So you get to your trident. This one is Frag Trident. I have two tridents. So you hit your little gear icon. Go down to Trident. Select Trident. And you get a whole bunch of stuff. First, I want to reset my uh, reagents B and C because I just changed them. So what that does is whatever percent they were left at, it's going to put them at 100% now. So I got them selected. You go back up to the top, hit that orange button there, and that's going to reset them. So we'll let that reset real quick. It doesn't take that long to do that. Now I'm going to go back down and I'm going to select Prime. See Prime there? That's important because what Prime does is it's going to pull the sample from this bottle up into the trident. You don't want to calibrate off of your tank water because that wouldn't make sense. So you use the calibration fluid. You got to do a Prime first. So select Prime. Sample. Like that. And then go back up to the top and hit that orange button again. What that's going to do is it's going to draw the sample from here into the trident. And then when that's done, we'll continue with the calibration. So another thing that I'm doing right now is uh, I'm going to prime the uh, B and C reagents too, just to see if it does anything with the uh, new reagent. So in the meantime, I'm going to wait and uh, wait for that to prime too. And then we'll continue with our calibration. Okay, just got done priming the reagents B and C. Uh, that's not required to do a calibration. I just wanted to do it just because I'm changing reagents. Uh, these reagents, these two month kits, actually this is a six month, but six month is just three of these. It actually has me double that time because I only test uh, alkalinity twice a day and calcium and magnesium once a day. So if you want to know how to do that, go ahead and like this video and I'll make another video to show you how to do that. Uh, so continuing on with this, we're going to go back to our Trident menu, select Trident, all the way down, maybe not quite all the way down, it says perform calibration, going to check that box, then you're going to scroll all the way back up to the top and hit that orange button. Before you do that, put in the values here that are on this bottle. So the top one is DKH. This bottle says 8.65. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. 65 there. Calcium says, man, you can tell I'm getting old. I even got glasses and I can hardly read it. 451. So we're going to change that to 451. Magnesium. 1352. We're putting in 52. So we got all of our values here uh, that are entered in that are on this bottle here. So once you've done that, then you can go up to the top and hit that orange button. And what that's going to do is that's going to run the calibration sequence. And this takes about 45 minutes. So uh, we'll come back after this is done and uh, I'll show you what to do next. Isn't this fun? Just kind of cozy underneath the sump here. All right, now that our uh, Trident's finished calibrating, it's time to restore the system so we can test our water. So what you do is simply take the tube out of the calibration bottle, put it back into the tank, and you can get rid of this. Or if you have another Trident to calibrate, there's enough in here to, to calibrate another one. It only used about half of it. I'll get these out of the way. And now what we'll do is we'll go back to our Apex Fusion. And we're going to go back to the Trident screen. 
by hitting a little gear icon. And you want to prime the sample line one more time because now you want to dry it, you want to uh, draw in the tank water. So we're going to hit prime and we're going to select sample. Go back up to the top, hit that orange button. And what that's going to do is it's going to draw the tank water back into the trident. And then you can run your tests from there. Uh, so I'll show you what I was talking about before uh, for saving some reagent. Because what will happen, you'll get a notification saying your reagent's empty. And you'll go feel a bottle and you're like, it's not empty. You know, why, why does it say it's empty? Well, that's just so I think that you don't get air inside your lines and lose your prime and you know, I guess goofy things can happen. So what you do when that happens, go to reset and uh, reset whichever one uh, says that it's empty. You know, give them a shake first, make sure there's still some in there. And if there is, go ahead and reset that one. Uh, that's going to reset the counter, though, to 100% on your screen. I'll show you on here. So you have to check it in a little while and actually make sure that it's empty. Otherwise, you will draw air into your uh, your tubing if you're not careful. So just keep an eye on it. So right here, we tap these a couple times, and there's your levels. I don't know if I can get it to show you on here. Yeah, that's a little better there. But it shows the two at 100%. So that's what it'll show. Uh, when you reset them actually says 96 percent now so when you see this before and it says that your reagent is empty and it's not it's going to think that it's empty but it really won't so you can do that to reset it so what i'm really curious about here is you can see my values here which are alkalinity 8.65 calcium 451 magnesium 1352 so we're going to see what they are after I run the calibration because I like those numbers pretty good. And what I found in my other tank is that I let it go out of cal. And even though I like the numbers, that's not exactly where they were. And uh, my alkalinity was actually way lower than I thought. So uh, we're going to check this out in a minute. We'll run a test and then we'll compare the results and I'll uh, see if there's any problems. And not too bad for not being calibrated for a few months. Uh, but as you can see, it, it was off a little bit. So uh, we can compare those results to uh, Hannah check there and see what we get. After about a week, I compared their test results to my Hannah checkers, and it's pretty close to the margin of error. However, when it came to the results for the magnesium, I compared it to my Cellifert test, and it was about 100 off. This doesn't concern me that much because magnesium tests are notoriously inaccurate. So I just use it as a trend rather than the exact number. Well, that'll do it for this video. There may be other issues that prevent you from calibrating your trident successfully, but hopefully the information in this video will give you your best chance for success. I'll also link the official instructions from Neptune in the description, so that way you can check them out. I'm Reefer Matt, thank you for watching, and happy reefing.